Hello, so let's just talk about it. Um, I know y'all voted for me to do the state of the culture three once every three months. And so I think for the first couple of times I did do it once every three months. But this time it's just been so busy that I have not had the opportunity to do it. So the last state of the culture was about eight months ago. And sadly and unfortunately, I really just hadn't had time to do it every three months. But here we go. So, this being the third state of the culture, uh, the, the, the premise behind the state of the culture is me talking about things that I feel are going right in the culture and the things that I feel are going wrong in the culture. So, I don't know whether I should just be all over the place or talk about what I feel like is going right first and then talk about what I feel like is going wrong first. I'm not really sure on how... I want to do it, but um, I'll just start. So, um, some of the things that I do feel like are probably going wrong in the culture or um, a lot of people not knowing their place. So, when I say people not knowing their place, I mean even myself, I consider myself a fan. Contrary to what anybody feels like I am in the culture and you know, I don't I don't go around Talking about what I am or tooting my own horn because that's just not me um, It's kind of like saying that you're real. You can't say you're real. Other people have to say that you're real I don't feel like I can walk around and say oh, I'm so real I feel like other people have to walk around and say that I'm real. So that's how that goes um, but a lot of what's going on is weird really weird people are paused and these are private conversations so my whole thing is if i have a private conversation with you if this is a private conversation and this is just this is bigger than the car culture by the way if i have a private conversation let's say i have a private conversation with one of the guys on my team dead dead scooby joe um or or trap if i have a private conversation with them Firstly, we had a private conversation either in person or on the phone or a text. That private conversation should never make it to social media. That private conversation should never make it out of the off the place from the place where we had the private conversation. I don't understand how we as grown people are screen recording um privately merging people in to listen to conversations that were private conversations. I, I can't fathom having a private conversation with with Desmond or having a private conversation with Boost Doctor or having a for any any number any any of those guys or ladies. I can't fathom having a private conversation with Paris or Coco or Chevy. And whether it be via text, whether it be via phone call or whether it be via uh, in person, somebody recording what I'm saying and it making it to the internet. Where wh when did we start doing this weird stuff, especially in our car culture? Who? Sometimes I just look and I'm like, who raised you? You know who who raised you? Why would you? Why? Who? Where did that come from? I don't I don't understand. So a lot of times me and y'all probably think I be acting funny, but when y'all send me um, DMs, I just double tap them and keep going. I don't even usually respond to them because who knows what this situation can turn into. I'm not, I'm not sure. Take me back to 2016, 2017, 2018 when the car culture was just fun. We had a good time. We went to races, we went to car shows, we went to street races. 2016, 17, 18, them was good times. Good times. We Y'all remember when Dump Master did that burnout in front of Loading Them Shop? When Dump Master did that burnout in front of Loading Them Shop, it wasn't, nobody, they wasn't, it wasn't no hard feelings. Everybody was having a good time. Them boys would go sit down and eat together. It was just a good time. I just don't even understand what's going on in our car world now. Everybody is 
screenshotting what somebody is saying. We're discussing private conversations on social media. If I didn't have the conversation with you on social media, the conversation is still private. I don't understand this. And to me, it's giving six and girls. I don't understand how, where all of this came from. Not to mention, this could be this whole situation. Big rims, you got rim companies, you got shops, you got corporate sponsors. This whole situation could be a multi-billion dollar come up for the people involved. And like um, Paris and Jeezy and Bruce said the other night, everybody has a role, which segues into the next thing that I'm going to say. And please don't get it misconstrued because I'm talking about myself as well. Everybody needs to know their role. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely, Blackwood. Everybody needs to know their role. Everyone needs to know their role. I am a fan. Contrary to how y'all feel about me or what y'all feel my role is in this, in this car world, I am a fan. I do not have a car. Thank you. I appreciate it. I do not have a car. I do not throw shows. I am not a promoter. I am a fan. And as a fan, I need to understand my role. My role is to be a fan. These guys spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on their cars. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. I can't tell Dez what to do with his car because guess what? Guess what KP haven't done? She haven't spent one motherfucking dime on his car. And she ain't. So why would I feel like it's my civic duty to tell that man what to do with his car. That's what I mean about me as a fan knowing my role. I am a fan. I should know my role. Now, if he asks my opinion, that's cool. But me imposing my opinion on him, where, where where's the sense in that? But I also fault the, the, the racers. Because guess what the racers have done? The racers have allowed the fans to put so much... To be able to say so much and be, have so much insight on what should be always going on on the back line. As a fan, I should not know none of their business. Unless I'm involved in that business. I don't think the fans being in the mix is the problem. I think the fans, the fans not knowing how far to be in the mix is the problem. But I feel like that's the racer's problem. Because guess what? It's like... When you're a little kid, if your parent tell you don't touch that or don't do that and you do it, guess what they do? They spank your little hand or they spank. I came from a spanking era. I came from an era where we, yeah, we got spankings with belts or whatever the parents had. We was borderline child abuse. So I came from an era where they going to beat you. And I'm not saying beat you physically. I'm saying tell you to mind your business. And it's a way you can tell people to mind their business. You don't have to be loud or boisterous or boastful to tell people to mind their business. Just tell them to mind their business. As a fan, now, granted, <laughs> right. Granted, I got a lot of things that, um, I got my hands in a lot of things. But guess what you'll never do? You'll never hear me. You'll never see me screenshotting what them guys or them ladies told me. You'll never hear a, no voice recording of what they told me. You'll never hear me get, see me get on the internet and talk about what they told me. Because they confided in me. This is the problem. Everybody wants to be so relevant instead of just sitting down and waiting to understand what their role is. I may even be guilty of that. I'm not sure. I don't think I am, but I may even be guilty of that. I have to know my role. I tell my guys all the time, listen, business ain't never personal. Hey, how you doing? Business ain't never personal. We're going to handle this business. But why are why is it allowed to be able to be on the Internet? As, a, as I said before, too many fans is allowed to be in the mix. Too many. Some, some of the races don't even care to be in the mix like some of the fans care to be in the mix. And I am a fan. I can't, they go Dez right there. Dez will tell you, I tell him, listen, I'm not going to tell you to do with your car. 
Some of the men I spent three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars on cars. Guess what? KP didn't do. Spend now dime. Dad just had to buy a motor. Had to buy. Had to get his car painted. He just did a whole bunch of stuff with his car. But guess what? KP didn't do. Spend one goddamn dime. I didn't give him one dime. Guess what he didn't do? He didn't ask me for one dime. And guess what else he didn't do? He didn't ask me for my opinion. So with all that being said, I watch it. Like I, I get on the lives. I don't really get on them anymore a whole lot, but I get on there. I watch. I see who's saying what. Who's? I mean, it's okay to it's okay to laugh and joke and have a good time. It's nothing wrong with laughing and joking and have a good time. But the problem comes in where everybody feels like they have an, they have a say so when it comes to these people cars. I don't get it. I really don't. I I I I think I come from an era where, you know, and and Truckload Slim said it perfect the other day. More people need to learn how to drink water and mind their business. And if we all learn how to drink water and mind our business, we'll be we won't be dehydrated. And we won't be in no in no danger of nobody having to talk crazy to us. Because one thing about me, I don't like people talking crazy to me. I don't. And I ain't talking crazy to nobody. Right. Let them do exactly what they're going to do. And then comes the thing in which I've seen guys saying, well, women need to mind their business. I, I do come from an era where women need to mind their business. Absolutely right. But here's the thing. If it's a private conversation with two men, yes, I'm minding my business. But if you are on social media putting all the business out there, I, you know, it's, it's a public forum. It's a public forum. You are on, a, so, so it's kind of like, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. What I mean by the double-edged sword is, Man, if you get on live, if you get on social media and you are talking in you 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 are putting the business out there in the court of public opinion. Right, right, they absolutely do. You're putting the business out there in the court of public opinion. So guess what? When you open up the business to the court of public opinion, you're you're allowing the public to have an opinion. And uh, sadly and unfortunately, I know some men don't feel like it, but women are the public as well. I don't, I don't really particularly say a lot about what y'all have going on because that's not my way. I, pre I prefer to, if I feel like y'all getting out, out of line or getting crazy, they'll tell you I'm gonna call them on the, I'm gonna call them on the phone. I'm gonna call them on the phone or I'm gonna pull up on them. I'm not one that's gonna get on, cause, cause for, for one thing, for me, I don't know who's watching. I might be messing up with a sponsor. I might be messing up with anybody. And I tell this to people all the time. This just doesn't go for women. It goes for people in general. You know, I don't prefer to show out on the internet. That's not my way. Now, if that's your way, you prefer to show out on the internet. You prefer to talk crazy. You prefer to let people, you know, all these things on the internet. That's cool. That's your business. It's not my circus or my monkeys. But just know you never know who's watching and you could be shooting yourself in the foot. Absolutely. So with that being said, that's not my way. It's a lot of people in this in this culture that um, could probably be probably be multimillionaires. But the reason that they are not multimillionaires is because of the next point that I'm going to make. Bad business. Some of y'all do bad business. Some of y'all do bad business and you play the victim. So when you're doing bad business, don't play the victim when it turn it comes around to bite you in the butt. Me, if I know a person does bad business, I'm not dealing with them. But for some odd reason, over here in our car culture, we accept people doing bad business. It's almost like we embrace people doing bad business. I don't understand where this comes from. Um, I, I don't understand how we embrace people doing bad business. So for me, it only takes one time for me to see a person do bad business. So 
It's like if if somebody burns one of my guys on the team, the team carnage. If somebody burns one of my guys and does bad business with them, guess what? They never got to worry about me doing business with them ever in life. And that how them how they say that's on my mama now. That's on mama now. I'm not doing bad business. I'm not doing business with them. And so I pride myself on trying to do good business. The the pains of doing good business are way 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 far beyond a lot of people's um understanding exactly so i have seen people do so much bad business right so i have seen some people do so much bad business and i'm not gonna say no names y'all probably could read between the lines or whatever but um I am not doing business with somebody who does bad bad business. I can't do it. That's just me. Absolutely. That's that's one of the next things I wanted to touch on. I say this all the time and one thing about me, I'm not I'm not I don't believe in the sexism or playing the male female role, but what I will say is to you men, y'all will do business with somebody y'all know is a crook. Y'all will do business with somebody y'all know does not have a good track record and does not do good business just because it's a man and not do business with us. Now, I'm all for equal opportunity. If it's a woman that's doing, um, I'm going to pin that, thanks, Des. If it's a woman that's not doing good business, by all means, don't do business with her. But if it's a man that's not doing good business, by all means, don't do business with him. Do business with people based on their merit, not based on their sex. Don't just do business with me because I'm a woman. Do business with me because I'm a good business person. Don't just do business with a person because they're popular or they're a man. Do business with them because they are a good business person. Male or female don't have nothing to do with it, but... What is disheartening is a lot of you guys will not do business with the women because they are women. And truth be told, a lot of us have way more business sense and business savvy and business energy and a business mind because we have had to work so much harder. But y'all will continue to do business with these men who y'all know are halfway crooks. Thanks, Dez. I appreciate it. So y'all doing business with the halfway crooks. Then you get upset when they do you wrong in business. So now, so now what? Now you, now you on the, now you taking it to, bringing it to the internet. Oh, such and such did this or such and such did that. But guess what? You've seen this person do five to 10 other people wrong before you did business with them. What is, what, what is that about? You just want to be punished. You like getting robbed. I'm, I'm a little lost. Now I'm not saying if one person say, oh, well, Dez did me wrong or KP did me wrong. That's, you know, that that's par for the course. You know what I'm saying? I understand. Hey there, it's par for the course. I understand people going to have complaints. You know what I'm saying? People people are going to complain. That's just the way of the world. Especially being that we don't have the complexion for the protection. You do understand that us being people of color, we do not have the complexion for the protection. You do not have complexion for the protection. So since you don't have complexion for the protection, you are already behind the eight ball. Now, when you see that, okay, this ain't just a one-off thing. Everybody complaining about KP. 20 people don't say KP is, doesn't do good business. Now you watching, you paying attention, you, you, you reading the red flags. But if every sing, if it's a, if it's a hundred people, and 90, 90 of them say KP don't do good business, you probably shouldn't do business with KP. Just being honest. 
Now you're going to have your haters. You're going to have people that just don't like you. And I, I mean, we all used to that. It's just people that's just not going to like you. It's people that's just not going to like your disposition. They're not going to like, you know, hell, there's some people that I don't like. So I move around from them. But when it comes to doing business, this is where we go wrong. Big rim racing and our urban car culture could be a, a billion dollar industry. It could be a billion dollar industry. <laughs> it could be a billion dollar industry, but guess what? We'll cut off our nose to spite our face. We'll talk, we'll talk so down on, on people because they're not doing what we want them to do. But what about you? Are you doing what you're supposed to do? Are you doing good business? Are you doing right by people? I'm not really sure on that. The only thing I tell people is I'm going to do, do right by my people. Now, the next point I really wanted to move on to was I'm going to try to keep the cursing at a minimum. But the next, th the next point I wanted to move on to was um, what's a good way to say it? The super fans. That's, that's a good, that's a good way to say it. The super fans. It's nothing wrong with being a fan of a racer or a car or a promoter or it's nothing wrong with being a, a fan of a person. It's nothing wrong with being a fan of a person. But the problem comes in where you are creating enemies and creating uh creating drama because this is the person that you are a fan of. I'm listen. Listen, listen, listen. I love a lot of actors, singers, uh uh rap artists. I love a lot of the guys that race. But are you going to catch me picking a fight with somebody who is I don't even know who this person is? And I'm picking a fight with somebody about, and, and nine times out of 10, you ain't never been to this person's house. You ain't never sat to their table. You don't know their kids' names. That's when I really consider that we are friends. So I think, I think it just got to be dialed back a little bit, but maybe just dial it back just a little bit. I won't lie, I'm a I'm a big huge fan of a lot of the guys. Some of the guys I don't really care for. But guess what? I'm not about to do. I'm not about to be all under their comments talking about, oh, I can't stand Dez or I can't stand Scooby. I can't stand what if he need to do Listen, man, I can't tell this man what to do with his program. I'm not telling this man what to do with his program. Cause yet again. These people have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on these cars. And guess what I didn't do? Chip in not one dime. So I think y'all, we, not me per se, but some, some of y'all just need to dial it back just a little bit. Y'all really, y'all really, it's giving six and girls. It's, it's really giving six and girls. And for you to be a grown man, some of y'all, I don't understand why it's giving six and girls, but I'm telling you it's giving six and girls. So maybe just just dial it back just just a teensy bit. I mean, just a teen, I mean, maybe more than a teensy bit. Maybe dial it back this much. Because it's 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 rough for y'all. Like I I I look at y'all in the comments and I can really I mean, those people even start with me. And you know, I'm one of the most non-confrontational people you're going to ever meet when it comes to this car stuff cuz I guess what? I already know one thing I ain't never seen. I ain't never seen a I ain't never seen the uh um a U-Haul behind a hearse. And we can't take none of this stuff with us. None of it. So when any of us gone, them cars still gonna be here, them clothes still gonna be here, the houses still gonna be here, and guess what's gonna happen? Life still gonna go on. So as some of y'all have addressed me. The next point I want to move on to, some of y'all have addressed me saying that it's like I kind of have stepped away 
from the car culture and stepped away from big rim racing. It's not that, but I actually have other things going on in my life. It's some things that I'm having to, that I'm working on, trying to um, work on work on with my family, trying to um, make passive income happen for myself, continue to have um, an enjoyable life because <laughs> enjoying my life because guess what? People leaving here every day. Y'all see I give an update every Monday on my homeboy Preston. Preston is one of the most positive people that you're going to ever meet in your life. And Preston was burned really, really bad in a, in a chemical fire at work. Just, just a few days before that, Preston was out there doing donuts in his old school car. <laughs> he was out there doing donuts in his old school car. So guess what? Life is short. Luckily, he's still here, but you never know. It's people out here leaving here every day. So what we need to do is have a good balance. And like I said, boy, if we can, if we could bring back 2016, 2017, 2018, those were some amazing years in, in the, in the urban car culture and the big rim community. This was before all the politics. It was before all the bickering and arguing and going back and forth. This was before everybody was a, everybody was a big rim racer. This was before, um, Everybody, everybody had to, felt like they were just, they had, they needed to, it, it was a good time. I went to the track and I felt like, it felt like a family reunion. It felt like we was family. It felt like we was having a good time. It felt like, it felt like home. I won't lie. It really felt like home. And... I can I still have places that I go that it feels like home. I'm going to tell y'all one place. Uh, there you go. Wasn't movie stars. I'm going to tell you one place that I always go that always still feels like home to me. And it be hot as hell. When I go to Texas, I'm not from Texas. I'm not from nowhere near Texas. I feel at home in Texas. Them boys and girls, men and women, roll out the red carpet. They take such good care of me. They, it's crazy. And I used to feel like that at Palm Beach. I used to feel like that at Darlington. I used to feel like that at, I just to name a few. Like I used to feel like that in Orlando. I used to feel like that everywhere we go. But now this shit is weird. So many weird people have come in. And you know what I really think about us that have been in this car, in this urban car culture and in this big rim shit since 15, 16, 17, even though I don't own a car, I feel like we got to start checking these motherfuckers for real. I feel like we got to start kicking their ass out. And I'm not even a fan of blocking people, but I really feel like we got to start blocking their ass for real because they're not making it any better. They are absolutely making it worse and worse and worse and worse. So I, I'm not, I don't really block people, but I said going forward, I was probably going to start blocking some people because it's some people that they do not mean our car culture any good. They are not trying to, you know, and, and one thing that I absolutely hate is I don't own five cars. I got, oh, you talking about you, you guys. Yeah. I got two, I got three cars, but my personal cars, but absolutely right they have condoned and they have participated in it and i told them i told one of the big guys the other day i said you cannot get mad at the monster you created they created these monsters another thing i wanted to touch bases on is men um i have seen a rise in y'all getting on the internet calling the women in the big rim culture bitches and hoes and cussing us out i don't like that i don't like that and I'm going to tell you, you're going to stand on that shit if you ever get on the internet and talk to me like that. Because I don't do it. I'm telling you right now. And you might have to fight me when you see me. Because I don't play them type of games. 
y'all y'all really i feel like y'all be really disrespectful to the women in the culture some of y'all but y'all will not say that to these men y'all find any little thing that we say any little thing that we do and now y'all want to go off on us and call us all type of names now, it's, it's not, not happened to me per se, personally, I don't think. Not that I can remember. But that's dead wrong. Like, who raised y'all? Who raised y'all? Right. I definitely got a whole team of guys that ain't about to play with me. Play, play about me. But I don't even want it to come to that. Let's just be cordial to each other. If I'm cordial to you, you be cordial to me. If you don't fuck with me, don't fuck with me. But don't say nothing to me. And that's that's just the way that I am. But yet again, we out here, everybody, everybody is important. Everybody want to be seen. Everybody want to be. It's, it's clout chasing at its finest. And I don't even understand. Most of the time, a lot of us, I'm including myself, don't even have a lot of clout in this in the, on this on the internet. It's people with millions of followers. And I'm just about to hit 20k. That's not a lot of clout. I looked at one of the rappers, he got 1.2 million followers. So why would I be out here doing anything like clout chasing? Absolutely. You got to make people respect you. And so what I do is I deal in respect. I try to give everybody respect. Now, some people, I just, I, it's hard. I ain't going to lie. It's hard. I ain't going to lie. It's, it's very hard. But I try to give everybody respect. I do. But I can't tell, I can't say somebody else clout chasing if I'm out here clout chasing too. I don't feel like that I do that. But if I do. I need to take a good, hard, long look at myself. A long look at myself. Now, um, what I have come up with as far as on the state of the culture, I really don't, I really, really, really don't like a lot of the things that are happening. Um, oh, I will say one, one thing that I really do love is I love... Um, the conversation that Paris and Bruce had the other day and a lot of the conversations that are going on. I love them. I love people that are trying to actually make the culture better. Some of them just doing it in their own little way. Some of them, I, I like things like I liked, I liked past tense. I still like them, but I like things like when they're starting club, when they're starting things like the top five and um, before top five split up now, then it was death row. Oh, also, um, not RIP to 95th street prayers, but we still need to try to keep him in our thoughts and prayers for him to, you know, come back. Cause he was one of those people that was just hilarious. Oh, man, we just came up on a year of losing Murph. And when I tell, when I tell y'all that was, that was a rough, that was rough for me. Losing Murph and that was rough for me. We have lost a lot of, we've lost a lot of guys. And over the last year, about three or four guys in the car world have committed suicide. So that leads to my next, the next thing I must say. Um, guys, y'all need to, y'all need to have somebody to talk to. I know it's not easy for you guys. Um, I know it's not easy for you guys to, uh, shoulder the weight of the world y'all have y'all have the weight of the world on y'all shoulders right and i know sometimes women we don't make it easier i know we don't but have somebody to talk to if you can't talk to your wife or your girlfriend or your whatever significant other is have somebody to talk to you know it's 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 a lot of guys have committed suicide at least four that i know this over this past year um, that were in the car world. Um, so I know pressure bus pipes is hard. It, it's hard. It's hard for everybody. It's not just hard for men. But like I said, I know four guys who have left here. 
at, at their own hands. So y'all need to have somebody to talk to. And have somebody to talk to that you know not going to run and tell your business. Not going to screen, screen record your conversation or, or record your call. You know, it's something great about having a confidant that you can actually confide in and not have um, problems. You know what I'm saying? And tell them your problems and not worry about your business getting out. I do check on my guys. I check on my guys. I try to, because listen, life is hard. Life ain't just hard for men. Life hard for women. Life hard for everybody. So have somebody that you can talk to and somebody that you could that could check in with you. You know, I've I've lost more friends, not not that they died, but lost more people, you know, because when one thing about me, when people exit their self out of my life, I don't even question why I'm okay, I'm fine with that. But I do like the fact that I have people to confide in. And that's what we all need. That's what we all need. And, you know, most of the women, Coco just said it, most of the women in the car, in the culture, we are here to listen to you guys. We, we don't want you to do something crazy to yourself. We prefer for you to just DM us, send us a message, hell, call me. A lot of y'all got my phone number. Um, absolutely. Take care of your mental health. Thank you for the badges. Um... Um, thank you for the badges, everybody. Make sure that you have somebody you can confide in. The next thing I'm going to say is I really, really hope we can get back to when the guys get along. You know, I think we're moving over to an era where a lot of them are getting along. Um, but I really hope we get back to the era where the guys can get along and... You know what? What I was thinking the other day was before like 20, 2015, 16, 17. It was 15. I'm pretty sure 15. 16, 17, 18. Um before all the breakups, before all the all the breakups and partnerships and before all the all the like bullshit. Um I would if we could get back to even somewhere close to that. I mean, somewhere close to that, it would be dope. I don't know if we can. Um, I know that I'm always willing to do my part. I'm willing to do my part, and I'm not going to be loud and boisterous and telling everybody what my part is. I'm just willing to try to be. Because one thing about me, I just try to kind of treat people the way that I want to be treated. And I think that it's not a lot of people out there that do that. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's with the cars. It doesn't matter if it's with the race. It doesn't matter if it's just what it is with. I feel like we can, we can, we just need to do right by each other. And that's what we're not doing. A lot of us are not doing right by each other. Even down to, you know, you bet somebody or, you know, you owe them some money or you come on, bro. Like, listen, I'm from Florida. I'm from the murder capital of Florida. I don't see people get killed and hurt by a little by a little bit of money. When I say a little bit of money, I'm talking about five dollars. I have seen that because it's never the money, it's the principle. So if y'all out here and y'all know y'all owe people money, pay them their money. If y'all out here and y'all know you you gotta, you know, you you owe somebody something, anything, equipment you know parts whatever get them people they stuff because it's gonna be somebody that's not going to they're gonna mess you up and i know some people personally who who is on some people and when they do see them it's not going well right stop all the arguing on the internet stop all the going back and forth on the internet. Man, listen, if you got something to say to somebody, good, hey there, if you got something to say to somebody, get in their DM or call them on the phone. 
The only thing we're doing is further making ourselves look worse and worse and worse. We making the we making the sponsors not want to deal with us. We making the the corporations not want to deal with us. We making the business people not want to deal with us. Cause listen, like I tell y'all all the time, you never know who's watching you. You never know. I told y'all the story about when I, when Smoke invited me out to, to the taping of Street Outlaws, right? They they tape at night, so they go they go to the street at like eight or nine at night, and then they stay there till it get daylight the next day. So we out taping all night. I'm tired, but I'm out walking around recording, and this and I say, excuse me, guys, I'm trying to get by these guys, and I say, excuse me, and one guy said, oh yeah, okay, cool, and then um. I, I walk past them and I come and I turn around and I'm like, oh, excuse, I, I'm, I'm so rude. How y'all doing? One guy say, hey, how you doing? The other guy say, hey, KP, how you doing? Now, these two Caucasian men, I don't know these men from a can of paint, but the guy said, I said, I know you. He said, no, but I've been following you for a really long time. Now, this Caucasian man way out in Vegas. And Street Outlaws tells me he's been following me for a long time. That lets you know you never know who's watching you. You never know who's watching you. So when you're getting on the internet acting a donkey, when you're getting on the internet plant, just doing all type of stuff, guess what you're doing? You're fucking up the church's money. And you loud and wrong. And, and now you got these people feeling like everybody in the culture is this way. And you and, and we not. I'm not that way. I'm probably one of the most professional people that you're going to find in this big room. And, and urban car culture. I'm probably one of the most. And have done business with so many people. And they haven't had a bad word to say. That doesn't mean that one day something's not going to come up where somebody does have a bad word to say. But thus far, I've been able to do good business with people. So guess what? We got to start kicking these people out that don't do good business. I, and I'm not saying we as me, because I'm, I'm not a racer. I'm a fan. I am a fan, right? My role is a fan. I just happen to have a show that I've been able to sustain since 2019. Oh, and big shout out to y'all for continuing to watch my show, continuing to subscribe to my YouTube channel, continuing to like hold me down. But I'm a fan. I don't own a car. So I have been able to find a space where as a fan, I'm able to facilitate interviews. And I just don't interview big rim racers. I don't just interview racers. I interview anybody in the car world, in the urban car world, I interview them. So it doesn't matter if they have five followers or five million followers. Right. But I also feel like Fans have a civic duty to actually want to move, right, want, want to see it progress in a positive way. It's a lot of fans out here, they ain't, they, ain't on the, they ain't on that type of time. They are not trying to see things progress in a positive way. They are negative. They don't give a damn. And we still allow them to be here. Now, it's, it's something to be said for trolling. Trolling is... You know, trolling is what it is. But think about a corporate sponsor watching these lives and seeing some of the shit these people say and do on these lives. Even in the comments. Think about a car. Think about, think about if it's an exec from Chevy on here. Think about if, it, if it's an exec from Chevy on a live where it's a thousand people and everybody going back and forth. You know what that exec from Chevy going to say? I ain't fucking with that shit. So now guess what you done done? Messed up the church money. Don't now, don't nobody, now they go back to their to they executive friends and say, oh yeah, um, uh, they, I don't, we don't, we don't, I don't think we want to do business with them. I don't think we want to do business with them because it's always some type of, it's always some type of drama over there. It's always some type of drama. 
So it's our civic duty to get the folks who always got some type of drama up out of here. Like I said, I don't even block people. But you know what I'm about to start doing? Blocking people. If you're not conducive to where we're trying to go and you're not putting out positive vibes and you're not being being positive on these, I'm a, I'm going to block you when I see you being negative on somebody else live. So guess what? It's about to start being a block party over here. Cause I ain't doing it. I'm not letting y'all. I want to. I want to be a part of the solution, and I want to be a multi-millionaire when it comes to this car stuff. One of the first females that's a multi-millionaire on the urban car big rim side. I want to be that, and I'm not about to let y'all come over here and mess it up when somebody from Chevy might be watching, or somebody from a, a corporate sponsor that can come. Um, a corporate sponsor that can come from Summit or something. I'm not about to do it. I'm not about to let y'all mess it up for me. I'm sorry. And and, and y'all shouldn't want nobody to mess it up for y'all. I think that was everything that I wanted to cover. Um, Thank y'all for tuning in to the third State of the Culture. This will be uploaded on YouTube. So if you missed any of the State of the Culture to, tonight... You'll be able to look at it on my YouTube. Um, I think, I know I was supposed to do it every three months because y'all voted for me to do it every three months. But I just, life was life and I had things going on. So I really have to just um, fit it in when I can. Again, thank y'all for continuing to tune in to Rise and Vibe since 2019. I've been, in, in 2019, I did two shows a week. So I would do my shoot shows on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So I was doing a lot of shows. Um, in 2020, I think I did two shows a week, maybe. Um, in 2021, I cut it off and I only did one show. So from 2021 to now, <laughs> you stupid. Only from 2021 to now, I've only do, been doing one show a week, which is on Tuesdays. Um, I may end up having to change the date of the show. But I'm definitely, the plan is still still to continue to do the show. Coming up on uh, my four-year anniversary. Um, also, thank you to, the, to those of y'all who are patronizing G-Body Parts Connect. I really appreciate you guys continuing to do um, business with me. Um, and I thank y'all do business because I do good business. Um, with that being said... I feel like if we have people out here that's not doing good business in the car, in our urban and big rim car culture, it's our civic duty to get them out of here. I don't know how we get them out of here, but I feel like it's our duty to get them out of here. Again, thank y'all for tuning in to the third state of the culture. It'll be uploaded on YouTube. If you missed any of it, I have it uploaded and it will be, um, of course, tagged where you'll be able to clearly see that it's the state of the culture. And yeah. I'm going to get out of here. Thank y'all for tuning in. Bye.